I'm so wound up over the gun treaty. Bombshell text of UN treacherous treaty leaked. It does plan to restrict your guns. It's up there at InfoWars.com right now, red linked. Powerful article by Aaron Dykes with all the proof, their own admissions. He even went and found it on the UN website. This is confirmed because they weren't you know, releasing the latest one. Obama's set to sign it today or sometime next week. They haven't said. Now, uh, Dave Krieger, break down how big this is. The, I mean, the, the, the amount of money we're talking about, all the lawyers you've interviewed for this. I've heard you on other shows. I've heard those lawyers on. We've had some of them on. The magnitude of this and uh, where you see it all going. And uh, because, you know, they, a few years ago, they talked about stopping this fraud, but instead the attorney generals are getting in line to help the banks continue this. Well, the problem is, is that you've got Eric Holder and Lanny Brewer that were former attorneys with the law firm of Covington and Burling, who actually issued the opinion order legitimizing MERS and MERS Corp. So when you have that kind of a, you know, a background going on, and I mean, we've researched a lot of these scenarios, the bigger problem that you have with, with deeds uh, and what's going on in the MERS system is that, you know, you may own title to property, but then MERS comes in by contract and they basically take over everything that the lender does as the lender's agent. And MERS, in many instances, has been ruled, like in the Kessler case in Kansas, as a straw man. Now, that doesn't sound very good to me. It sounds more like a snake oil salesman. And so, you know, one of the things that, that bothered me about it when I first started researching MERS was how it obfuscated all the truth and the facts from the homeowners. They had absolutely no idea who owned their loan. And as a matter of fact, Robert Pratt, in the hearings in Washington on March 15th, and Mark Dan, the former Ohio Attorney General, and I were on stage in Seattle um, lecturing to a group of homeowners. And at, at we, that was uh, preceded the uh, the Bain versus Mers and Selkowitz versus Mers et al cases, where Robert Pratt from Fulbright and Jaworski, who's a Minneapolis attorney representing all the uh, defendants in Mers, basically said that it's a fallacy to think that borrowers need to know who owns their mortgage, who owns their note. It's insanity. And Mers, since this whole thing started, has conveyed nearly 30 million titles, reconveyed 30 million titles, and in our estimation, subjected as many homeowners to double liability because there are people coming back, as you said, Alex, before. Uh, and kudos to this that you recognize this. They're coming back in and they're, they're foreclosing on homes that we know damn well were paid off. The, the bigger picture is homeowners are co totally taken off guard. And even the ones that don't know, that, that think they have a paid off mortgage, two out of 10 homeowners that are contacting my firm these days aren't in default. And they're saying, look, I've got MERS on my deed of trust or mortgage. What do I do? Well, you, you best look at your chain of title because MERS affects over 70 million pieces of property in America. And here's a headline. HSBC fined 27.5 mil for money laundering. They were using their customers' bank accounts to run drug money through. Uh, we're talking about 300 plus billion found in Wells Fargo didn't get in trouble. They paid like a $110 million fine. Uh, folks can look that up. These are organized crime syndicates. Exactly. I mean, this is the mafia, folks. And they're saying, we don't care if you've had that house 20 years. We're taking it, even when they never even had a connection to it. I mean, this is just incredible how criminal they are. Well, when you look at the fact that the DOJ is in negotiations with Credit Suisse and that they basically were laundering money through the Iranian state banks into this country as investments, uh, and then they use that money basically as the middleman, and this is a real big picture. People don't understand that these investors, when they came in, all these 401ks, these municipalities, they bought these uh, credit default or rather not credit default swaps, but they bought the collateralized debt obligations thinking that they were legitimate, but they were actually structured to fail. What we're finding is that these documents, all of these loan papers- Oh yeah, that came out in Congress. They designed it to fail knowing it would do this. Then they get bailed out and they sold the fraud to people. Oh, it's incredible. Well, you, not even to mention the LIBOR scandal and the fact that they're now admitting that this is what they based the target. These people are beyond criminal. They are madmen. And then they're going to try to use the implosion as the wave they're going to ride into total dictatorship. I mean, it's pure genius, really. Well, it is. And the thing is, is that they're using 401k money. They're using other people's money, putting themselves in MERS as, a, as the middleman, clouding the title. And I mean, I don't think, I think this is an afterthought. Uh, it became very obvious to me, January 7, 2011, when the Ibanez case came out of Massachusetts and U.S. Bank, here they are, uh, you know, the banks supposedly know what they're doing. And people would think, well, you know, why shouldn't we trust the banks? Well, they did this from 2003 to 2008. And we've got inside sources at Chicago Title telling us that one third of the properties in Kansas City alone that were mortgaged and financed between those two years, 03 and 08, are uninsurable.
terrible. You cannot get title insurance. And let me third of the property means you can't sell them. You can't exactly. have exactly. You cannot sell them. Unbelievable. And and here's what I've been told by top stockbrokers. Well, it's admitted in the news they've taken the forty plus trillion in bailout just in the U S. That they got from the Federal Reserve, not just the 800 something billion, but the open window, and they've leveraged it back into derivatives and are accelerating this. I mean, they're doing all the same tricks again. Yes, they are. And as long as this remains unregulated, they're going to continue to do so. And they're they're also doing resecuritization. And Fannie and Freddie are. All right, stay there. I want to break down what the book goes over and and, and, and how people can fight back. You got to get it. Clouded titles. Every homeowner has got to have this book. Infowarshop.com. We're. Well, we're firing the bat spotlight up into the sky right now. Everybody that wants to defend the Second Amendment, it just went up at Infowars.com. Bombshell, UN gun treaty does ban guns. I think we just need to add, I finally have the full headline. Bombshell, leaked UN gun treaty does ban guns. That's it. Add that one word, Aaron, and you're done. And I want everybody to get this right now. And I want to ram it out with that headline at twitter.com forward slash real Alex Jones. I want it the top story on our main uh, Facebook. Everybody like that channel. Everybody retweet now. We have got to get this out so that they can't use the mass shooting to get the few votes they need in the Senate to ram this through. Obama is going to sign it. We had an NRA board member, former Congressman Bob Barr on yesterday about this. And it could pass the Senate. Regardless, Obama has said he's going to operate outside of Congress and try to order the ATF to do it. Like they said last year, they were going to ban most shotguns outside of law. You're like, but that's illegal. These are criminals, ladies and gentlemen. When I call them criminals all day, there's so many crimes they commit. And these are just the minions of the criminals, the foreign banks. The six mega banks have announced in publications everywhere that we've read on air and played clips of just uh, earlier today. We played a clip of it. That guys, cue up the uh, fact that the banks say we're their slaves. Cue that up for me. I want to play that here. This is why they want our guns, because they're getting ready to try to take everybody's firearms. First, they're going to register. Turn them in. They're going to ban importation and sale. This is the plan because this is a mafia. These are brazen, wild criminals. This is a white collar takeover. Here's the clip where they explain through the fraud, through the derivatives, their Ponzi scheme operators that gave themselves unlimited fake money got us to sign on to it too big to fail, making them our owners through fraud. It's that simple. Here it is. So mostly what they do is hold summits. I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are, because if we and then he goes on. Of course data, we're slaves to global government run by that. banks. So we and then the other three guests all agree we're slaves. It's wonderful, and I can show you Financial Times, all of it. They've created the fraud. They've gotten us to sign on to it, and now they're saying they own us when they should all be in jail. Okay, laundering drugs, owning the aircraft, running the cocaine, the biggest ones. They run it all. They run it all, folks. They run the police, the military, everything, and it's all a fraud. Now I'm going to give you the floor. Because this book is powerful, we're going to have you back for a two-hour special. David Krieger is our guest. He wrote Clouded Titles. He works at a, he, you know, he was a media guy for a long time, TV, radio, but he works at a law firm as a paralegal, helped put this book together. It's, it's really, I think, the best book out there that really has the latest info. The lawyers he quotes in here are people we've had on that have been successful, but they're too busy to write books. I mean, am, am, am I right, basically, uh, Dave, in saying that's kind of why this book came out? It is in part, Alex, you know, we have attorneys buying this book by the case and actually giving it to their clients who are in trouble and telling them, look, you need to read this. You book. have lawyers come into your seminars. Yes. As a matter of fact, we did a uh, CLE that was sponsored by the state bar of Texas on quiet title actions and chain of title assessments, which is what I teach in separate workshops. Uh, and I've got one coming up in Chicago on the 18th and 19th of August that you probably, uh, if you want to go to cloudedtitles.com, you can actually download a PDF of the flyer and, and register and sign up online to attend it. Uh, there's extremely limited seating. Uh, we give you a 200-page workbook. We actually show you the kinds of things that we're 
digging up in the land records. And there are uh, counties right now that are contacting my firm, asking us to come in to audit their land records to determine how many documents were fraudulent. And I don't know if you knew this in Texas, Alex, we've got 37.101 of the media over the penal code. And the penal code, it basically says that you cannot use fraudulent documents to deprive a, a homeowner of their property. It is a state jail felony. And when I had a meeting with a, uh, a Southern County district attorney last October on Halloween, he told me we don't have the white collar division, uh, you know, the able number. No, no, no. Under the last three presidents, they've gotten rid of the white collar divisions at the federal level. Basically, they've cut it down to nothing. Because the criminals now run everything. Virtually. And the, the bigger problem is, is that if we, I, I told the, the district attorney, it only takes one case to send a message. You prosecute one and get one conviction, you send a message. And there are some sheriffs out there like Chris Conley, the high sheriff in uh, New Hampshire, who has reached out to me and we've been in communication by email. And he's asking my firm to assist in uh, determining how many documents are recorded in the land records that are fraudulent that are being utilized to deprive homeowners of their property. This is a huge thing, and this is one of the things that we teach in the seminars is how to spot these things so that if you ever go into court with an attorney and the bank produces some sort of document, the attorney's well-trained enough to be able to spot what the problems are within seconds and be able to identify this and object to certain things on here. All we come up with basically in here is the suspect documents. It's up to the attorneys to bring this thing in, move it into discovery, build enough of a case where the case will rest on its merits and they can sustain a motion for summary judgment. Yeah, they're grabbing the low hanging fruit because they hit families, poor people, but also even wealthy people. And they're just like, but but I, I own the house. This isn't just people who are going into foreclosure. I mean, they're going after everybody. Exactly, and we need case law. We need good case law out there, and that's what the attorneys want. There are attorneys out here, despite you know what a lot of people think, that they really care. Uh, and there have been some victories, though. I've had some of the been. lawyers on that are beating them a lot. We had an attorney in Little Rock that they put a mortgage loan officer on the stand who was not licensed, who was not bonded, who admitted he was a convicted felon. When they put him on the stand, the guy couldn't even make a mortgage loan. And the judge sat there and screamed at the guy on the stand and said, you lie, you lie, and you're going to pay. You're going to pay this man $200,000. And if you don't, I'm referring this to the district attorney for prosecution. So this is, I mean, but see, it's, but see this is organized crime. These people should be going to a hard time. Well, they should be. But, you know, when you've got the, the DOJ and everything being manipulated by MERS and the banks, it makes it very difficult. And we know this is going on. It's just hard to prove. We're not to that stage of the game. Well, let me tell you, somebody tries to, well, I tell you what, I've had enough of this. I have just absolutely had enough of their crimes. And, and hearing the stories of where they're even taking people's farms that they bought 15, 20 years ago. It's not just houses. Uh, a commercial real estate. I mean, this is just across the board. Exactly. Or they do things like in Abanias where they foreclose on a house and they don't record the assignment until after the foreclosure. I mean, that's just plain arrogance on the part of the banks. I want to add, if you go to InfoWarsShop.com, we have the book out of the gates discounted uh, $10 off the regular price. We also have a free citizen rule book and bumper stickers with all orders and your purchases support our entire media operation. But this is one of those books that I couldn't put down because I've already done so much research on this. I was like, knew that, knew this, knew that, but oh, didn't know that, checked it accurate. This is a, I mean, like you said, the lawyers don't have the time to sit there and represent everybody. But with this book, you're not the, you know, little gazelle out there. You're more like a, a rhinoceros and, and the lions aren't going to go after you first. They're going to eat the little, you know, bug-eyed uh, gazelle first. They're going to go after what they see as weak. Uh, and, I mean, what happens when people do, I mean, because I've been seeing some victories, what are the big banks, that, well, the crime syndicates operating as banks?